16 years later, and we are finally going a sequel to Psychonauts. This is a game come true. This game wasn't supposed to exist. Tim Shaver had an idea for the game back in 2011, and went around the publishers asking for funding, and most if not all of them said no. The game more or less and the idea died with him up until 2015, but all fine stated they're doing a sequel, but needed help from fans, and they sorted 3.3 million with a secret investor also backing them. They quickly reached beyond that in 5 days, and by 2017, Starbreeze was the investor who invested 8 million into the company. The game's original release date was 2019, but by 2019 Microsoft bought Double Fine and the game was delayed for another 2 years before coming out now, and good thing it was delayed, there was a lot of stuff that was cut out in the original version of the game if Microsoft didn't buy them out, if you want to read up on it, I have a link below, but damn it's crazy when you read up on what this game was beforehand, and there's still going to be more information hopefully coming out as time goes on. Anyways, how does the second game hold up? Is it good? Yes it is, it's so good. This is my game of the year. If I was you, stop watching this and play the game. It's so sick. But I should add, if you're just going to play this game story and nothing else, then I would recommend you to wait because right now the game is actually quite short for the story alone. It's about 7 hours at most and you can finish it within a day if you just do the story. However, if you're like me and you want to do all the collectible stuff, then you're going to be around playing this game for about 15, about 17 hours at most. And that's the way the game's actually supposed to be played because it is a collectathon, but do understand that not everyone wants to play like that and that's fine. And before I get into the story, I do want to mention the fact that if you didn't enjoy Psychonauts 1 story, then I would highly recommend you skip this game entirely because the themes and the concepts of what the story is about is more or less the same but they go further and deeper into that and that's what I personally enjoy and if you haven't played the first one and you want to play the second one that's totally fine the game has a really good recap but I highly recommend you play the first one and then go into Rumbus of Ruin because the actual experience of playing those games then playing this game actually works very well. As for the story, this game takes place right after the first game and right after Rumbus of Ruin. The story follows Raz entering the mother lobe and becoming an intern where he has to prove he's capable of being a true psychonaut. But due to unfortunate events, Raz discovers a mole is within the mother lobe and how the most evil villain the Psychonauts has fought might be coming back. Can he figure out who's the mole? Is he capable of being a true Psychonaut? And can he stop the most evil villain the Psychonauts fought from coming back before it's too late? All those questions will be answered if you play the game. When playing this game, I was really scared that the story would be half as good as the first, especially as this game was 16 years in the making. And honestly, who could blame me with how many games fans have been waiting for only for them to disappoint? Just look at Shenmue 3, Kingdom Hearts 3, Last of Us Part 2, and so many other games that failed. Games that complicated or lost the charm of what made the original series so good. And I'm here to say Psychonauts 2, well, I love the story for this game. There is so much charm and analogous moments that complements the first game's story and plot threads. This game isn't ashamed of itself, it isn't afraid to try new things, and it keeps stuff the fans from the previous games loved. It doesn't wreck on anything or change characters for the sake of it. It has twists and turns that reveal so many threads the first game set up. It ends, and that's what I really love, the game just ends. There are no cliffhangers. The game continues from the previous game and expands upon the lore. The continuity from the previous games are also appreciated. The story understands what it is and takes account for what the original was trying to say and it shows. And with this game it takes it up to another level where Tim Schafer shines. He really cares about the world, about the lore, the characters and everything to do with the story. In the original review I never talked about Raz as a person. But I admire him, he's such a delightful character. His personality is funny, charming and witty. And in the original it was shown that he loves to learn and has a big heart for others but ultimately he's a giant nerd and honestly I love him for it. And with this game he's relatively the same but he grows as a person learning vulnerable lessons that help him become a psychonaut and a person. And after a certain event in the game, he asks everybody if he's allowed to go into their mind and to me 
That alone shows such character development more than other games. And the new characters you meet are as good or better than some of the kids in the original game. Here the characters have slightly bigger roles and more diversity to them. Each character is funny, sweet and just wholesome but that's not to say everyone is good. Like the first game, I had problem with the kids and how you don't really get to know them that well. And it's the same here with the interns. The first time you interact with them, they take Raz's clothes and leave him in a closet. Raz is then forced to get new ones and then when interacting with the interns they don't apologize or acknowledge what they did or anything. They're just like, yeah, oh well. And that infuriates me so much. And there wasn't at any point where I got to know them well enough to be like, you're cool and I forgive you. And instead it was more like, oh my god, I hate all of you. At some point they join you on a mission and they help out. And that's the extent of how much you get to know them. And it's quite upsetting as I want to know more about them. I want to know why they want to become psychonauts, why they came here, what they fight for. I want to know more about them. Instead, all you get is the one mission and a few bits of dialogue here and there through the overworld and that's it. You do see them again way later in the game, but it's upsetting because they seem like a cool bunch of characters, just not enough to know about. Regardless, I can't say that about the family. It's strange. Even though they're in the same position as the interns with how much you interact with them, I feel like there was more told about them than the interns. The family are all lovable, even in their misguidance of psychonauts, they're all amusing and fun and they all feel like a real clumsy we're close family that I can't help but love. And I love just interacting with everybody and I wish there was just more, I just, I just wish there was more with them. On top of that, previous and returning characters this time around have more to them, making them fleshed out also. In the previous game, I like Lily, you could tell who and what type of person she was. But here, she really came into her own. If you go around and search for her during the hub world, she really grows as a character. Not only her, but others too, like Ford. One aspect of the story I dislike is how everybody is mean to Raz for no reason. I get it, he's new and the youngest, but then there are moments I kept asking myself why aren't Sasha and Mila backing him up? Didn't he just save the day twice? He gets nothing in return, there isn't a single thanks or acknowledgement for what he's done and that left me bitter with how the second in command of the Psychonauts treated him during the casino mission, stating he couldn't come on the mission despite saving the day twice previously. It all felt harsh for the sake of it. And I kind of wish Raz had more spunk in this game because in the first one he stuck up for himself when it came to Bobby and maybe it was because in the previous game he was surrounded by kids his age whereas in this game he isn't but I don't know I kind of wish he just had more just more spunk otherwise he's still a lovable character and you know what despite a lot of people being mean to Raz the story overall is really good and I enjoyed every moment with it there are moments in the story where I choked and I was in suspense and I was just like what's gonna happen next? In my personal opinion the story is getting an easy 9 out of 10. I am gonna be talking about a story at the end of the video to go over spoilers or it might be another video but for now, gameplay. Every mine feels so different like the first game but even better. And then there are some levels you go through and they feel as though they are legitimately art pieces that you have to stand there and appreciate the work that went into them. And one of the things I have such an enjoyment for is when transitions happen or in essence a portal to the next area. I love how in one moment you're walking through an office and the next is a mouth or you're going through a bottle and the next thing is inside a bottle is an actual building and it's so amazing to look at. And it's all within the same area without a loading screen. And just like the first game, this game takes the mentality of each person and makes sure that they are represented well. To show how each mind is a collection of thoughts, memories and feelings. The game depicts trauma, therapy, empathy and many other mental issues that almost somebody at some point might have gone through. I love how the game doesn't take away from the hijinks with the comedy or the action. Instead the game allows the mind to be a collection of memories and thoughts that depict the person as the way they are. All the minds in this game are really creative and all of them are interesting and fun. Unlike the first game, the second doesn't take time to pick up and show the creativity. Instead, the very first mind to the last are a blast and incredibly different from each other. I also love how they all feel very different with their own unique gimmick where the gimmick doesn't take away from the thought of staying true to the overall gameplay of being a platformer as well as a collectathon. In each mind you can find emotional baggage that will cry out for the tags, 
figments a collection of memories as you gain 100 of them your rank will increase memory vaults that reveal more of the person's backstory half a mind brains that need the other half to add more to your health bar and finally nuggets of wisdom and then there's still more stuff to collect outside the mind you have the mother lobe where you can explore it but honestly the mother lobe feels small and often time has nothing interesting happening within it also has nothing on camp oblongata that area is so charming the mother lobe compared to it is just okay it makes sense for what it is and it is fun to explore but damn camp oblongata is just so cool i miss it but once you get outside of the mother lobe the hub world really shines and the hub world outside is quite huge and it makes me hope that if there's any chance for a Sakinos 3 it's open world outside you can visit the woods go through different buildings find the other kids hanging out see Raz's family interact with them get to know them do side quests find collectibles and side cards and as for platforming i can't stress this enough but it's way better Raz now feels natural when jumping from platform to platform he already felt fine in the previous game but now when doing platform sections he feels better he sticks onto objects without fail there's no gaining momentum before a jump now he just jumps from where you need him to be when it rails the camera doesn't move all the way around and now rail sections allow him to turn without jumping from rail to rail it feels natural it feels like you don't need to worry about your momentum as much now you can stick to walls and jump from side to side and the platform sections overall visually look better although what's strange is when you grab a pole and you don't swing raz will drop down for some odd reason it's annoying because when pressing the b button that does the same thing that should be changed and as for the collectathon there's a reason you want to do it now every time you rank up you gain points and with those points you can then upgrade your side powers and make them a lot better the powers Raz obtains are largely the same from the first game, with some revisions to them. Three of them were removed, but another three were gained, and I find the new powers are more useful. I do have an issue with one of the new powers, not the power itself, but on how long it takes to receive it. It comes way later in the game when you're almost halfway done for some reason. And when you get a power mental projection, it has such a cool easter egg. Listen to the voice. If you know anything about Raz's voice actor, just listen to the doodle. It's such a treat. On top of that, the combat hair is so much better. Now there's no meter for side blast, it regenerates. Pyrokinesis inflicts a bigger area and does more damage. Telekinesis now feels like it has weight behind the objects you pull and throw. And now the enemies in this game complement the powers and situations to use them. Before you only needed a side blast and levitation and you would have completed the whole game. But here there are so many different enemy types, all who need different ways to be beaten to the point where this game feels like an action hack and slash game. Where I would have loved some more combat stuff that emphasizes on that, like maybe if Raz dodges an incoming attack, the game slows down for a bit like Bayonetta and he can then use a shortcut to use a side power for a better combo string, that would be so sick. The combat currently is really good for what it is but it could be so much better. And due to having points now when you rank up, Raz can make his current side powers way better in combat or outside of combat. And when outside of combat and mines, the shop is back. You can buy more stuff, everything now is optional and there's never a moment in the game where you're forced to buy anything unlike the first. And the stuff you can buy is way more beneficial as now you have items that heal you, that respawn you without going back to a checkpoint. And more importantly, you have badges that affect the gameplay. Some badges can improve the damage of your attacks or some can provide additional attacks. But then there are some that are just cosmetic and they're really cool to look at. However, on that note, you only have three badge slots and it's infuriating. I like the cosmetic stuff that can be equipped, but I'd rather do more damage or have an additional attack for one of my moves. It's rather silly that I have to compete with them. There's no reason for them being pins and some pins don't make any sense. Like I bought the discount pin but every time I'm going to use the shop I have to change out one of my current pins and switch to that. It feels rather cumbersome to change the pin every time I'm going to use the shop before and after. This is something that should definitely be changed. And in the end what I truly and I mean truly love about this game is that it has heart. And that the game is about healing and changing as a person but understanding where you are and how you got here and what you can do to improve. 
The game is a valuable piece of healing as the enemies you fight in the game are representations for negative thoughts and showing how they're just obstacles that everybody can push through. All of it takes time and getting help from others. Nothing is simple and everyone needs help from time to time. That's why I got out from this game. This is a game where I felt needed to come out with all the negativity in the world. And with that, the gameplay is getting a 9 out of 10. It's so much better than the previous game and honestly, this is Double Fine's best game. The hub world where the gameplay and everything revolving around it gives me hope that if there's ever a Psychonauts 3, they're going to nail it out of the park. And it also gives me hope that with the next few games outside of Psychonauts, they're just going to be as good. Look at Brewer Legends, I hated the original, but if the sequel came out, I hope it blows me away. If the same magic is applied here as it will be there, I will love it. Oh yeah, and the game needs to have an option for a new game plus or at least allow players to reset levels. Otherwise, what's the point of some upgrades you can get later in the game? Like, if you are rank 150 or whatever it is, one of the upgrades you can get is unlimited psi powers. So you don't need to regenerate or wait or anything. And you can never use it because you can only get to 125 up until the moment you finish the game because you can only use a certain power to get a collectathon, which increases your rank also, which doesn't really make much sense when you think about it. Otherwise, there are a few things that need to be ironed out, like the camera, it's kind of weak, you can't pose, and Raz takes off his goggles when standing still, there's not enough camera freedom and expression to make for unique photos, but other than that, I'm done. I mean, the game's done also. <laughs> oh, if there is one thing I would love to see, is that after all the fig backers are sorted with, I really want a real collector's edition with a statue, or even a limited run with a statue, dude. I will want, I want that sta I saw the fake collection edition. I wish I backed this game at the time. This game is so cool. And I know the fake backing also had his own collected edition. I just wish I backed this game, dude. I wish I was a fan of this game back in 2015, I think this game was announced. I just, oh my god, this game is so hype. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I've been the trash bro, king of filth. If you like this, please like, subscribe, comment, I don't know, all the usual garbage. Take care and see ya everybody.